All right, so we are now going to start talking about organic compounds with elements other than carbon and hydrogen included. So now we're going to start uh, talking about ones that have oxygen, um, halogens, and nitrogen. And in our notes book, we are on page number 50. So let me get my pen ready so I can do some drawing because otherwise this would be too boring. Okay, so this is page number 50 in your notes book. All right, so we have an orchestra. And, you know, while you might have, you know, a whole set of violin players, all of those violin players are not playing exactly, you know, the same um, particular notes every single time, right? So even though they're very similar, they're going to have some very key differences. And, and that's what a organic functional group is. It is a compound that is similar to other compounds in the same category, but it's going to behave a little bit differently, almost like if you were taking an antibiotic. So what antibiotic you take for strep throat is not necessarily the same antibiotic that you take for an ear infection. Um, and it's not the same one that if you cut your finger and you had an infection in your finger. Right? There's many different antibiotics, even though they're all still classified as antibiotics. And a lot of them are very similar in their chemical structure. And so they all are going to have similar what we call organic functional groups. So organic functional groups plays a big part in um, medicine and in health and food chemistry. So what's a functional group? So a functional group is a specific arrangement of atoms added to a hydrocarbon. So we still have that basic hydrocarbon. And it's going to give us characteristic properties and characteristic reactions to that organic compound. So some kinds of atoms we can add, we can add those halogens. And so again, remember halogens are group number 17 on your periodic table. And then we have oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and et cetera. So we will focus on various compounds where there's halogens, oxygen, or nitrogen. We're not gonna talk about um, sulfur compounds and there's a whole branch of organic chemistry where we include metals, which is called organometallic, and we're not gonna talk about those either. So we're just going to basically focus on um, halogens and oxygen. Oxygen is going to be our big one. So here we have a table. This is going to be a little bit similar to table R, but this is not exactly table R. And we have organic compounds, and we're going to classify them by their functional group. So it's basically we're classifying things that look alike, but they're not exactly alike, but they're similar. So we have things that are called the halo carbon. And so then there's a halogen for group number 17 on the periodic table attached to a hydrocarbon. So R is going to represent any length of hydrocarbon chain. And remember, the length of the hydrocarbon chain, right, goes along with our table P prefixes, right, meth and eth and but and oct and all those. And we can also use an R prime, which that's what this little thingy means, that's R prime, uh, can represent a different hydrocarbon chain. So if I have a carbon chain with fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or ionine, it's called a halocarbon. If I have a carbon chain with an OH, that OH is a hydroxyl, that's going to be an alcohol. If I have a carbon chain with an oxygen in the center and a carbon chain on the other side, I've got what's called an ether. And if I've got this right here, that's going to be this carbon oxygen double bond is called a carbonyl. And then that will be an aldehyde. If I have this and I have carbons on either side and that carbonyl, that's what we call a ketone. And then here's the functional group that classifies something as a carboxylic acid or an organic acid. And then here's this functional group, which is how we classify something called an ester. Um, you've ever heard me you know, refer to my imaginary daughter, um, Ethel and Esther. They're twins. Uh, this is where I get that name, Esther, from that I think is adorable. Um, and then if I have an NH2 with attached to a carbon chain, I've got something um, that's called an amine. And then if I have a carbon-oxygen double bond and this nitrogen, then I have something that's called an amide. And then maybe you remember from living environment or if you're planning on taking SUPA bio or AP biology or college biology in your future or you're a living human being 
and everybody has what's called amino acids, right? Because those are our backbones of our proteins, right? So then that would be this amine functional group combined with this acid functional group. That's what makes an amino acid, just in case you didn't know. Okay, so just a couple little transitions of stuff that I've already said. Okay. So now let's take a look at our first organic functional group, right? Halogen substituents, right? So a halogen replaces a hydrogen in a hydrocarbon, and we get what's called a halocarbon. And so this X is going to be anything, again, like I said, from group 17 on the periodic table, right? The halogens, right? Halides. And we call them halocarbons. And so when we name them, fluorine becomes fluoro, right? So remember when we did our regular naming, Na and F, right, with sodium fluoride, the ending ide indicated that you had an ionic bond between that sodium and the fluorine. So now if I have that fluorine attached to a hydrocarbon, we give it fluoro. Chlorine becomes chloro, bromine becomes bromo, and iodine becomes my favorite one to say, iodo, because it kind of reminds me of like Lord of the Rings and Frodo. Yeah, you know I'm silly. Okay, so let's talk about how do we name these things. We're going to name the longest alkane chain. That's going to be consistent from our hydro hydrocarbons to our organic functional groups, right? Counting the carbons and then coming up with a long chain name, first step. And then if we have, then we're going to have fluoro, chloro, bromo, or iodo. And we're going to count and we're going to have to give a number of where exactly are any of these elements located. So let's give an example. So let's give this as an example. So you have this in your notes and it's already filled in. So, but now I'm just going to show you how did I get up, how did I come up with this name? So the first thing I have to do is I have to count the longest chain of connected carbons, right? So one, two, three. And I'm going to use table P. And according to table P, the prefix for three is prop, right? So then I have, I'm going to call this like propane. But it's not just propane because I've got these two chlorines stuck on there. If those were hydrogens, this would be propane. But it's not propane. It's got, you know, completely different physical and chemical structure than propane. But I have to say, where is this chlorine and where is this chlorine? So I have to say chloro. Right? Just like when we did a branch, we had methyl, right? We had that YL indicating a branch. That oro, right, with the chlorine, chloro, indicates we have chlorines. But I've got two of them. So just a di chloropropane. Well, okay, but where exactly are they? I need to give number locators, right? It's kind of like their house address. So this is carbon one, two, three. And if I did this in reverse, one, two, three, it ends up being the same, the same name. But since it's closest to this end, I'm gonna count this as my first carbon. This is the way I'm gonna count. So I'm not gonna do that way. Right? So then I have uh, one chlorines on carbon number one, the other chlorines on carbon number two. So one comma two, and then we do a dash between numbers and letters. One comma two dichloropropane. Now the next one, right there's the answer, right, which you've got in your notes. So now we're gonna draw one. So I wanna draw two two diodo three methyl butane. Wow, that's a mouthful, right? So let's pick apart this name and let's try to figure out what we need to do. So these are locator numbers for diiodo. So that means I have two iodines. And where are they located? They're both on carbon number two. Now I have a number three with this meth YL. So this means YL means a branch. So I have a one carbon branch. And where is it? It's on carbon number three. And now I have the prefix bute, which means four carbons. And I have A and E, which means I have single bonds. So now let's draw this out. 
always starting with the, lo the longest carbon chain. So one, two, three, four, butane. So now I'm going to add the extra stuff that's on there, right? I've got these two iodines on carbon number two. So I'm going to put two iodines here. There. So now I've got my two iodines. And now on carbon number three, so I established this as two. So now on carbon number three, I have a one carbon branch. Okay, so there's my base structure. Last step and always the last step is making sure every carbon has four bonds around it. So this one right here needs a few more, needs three more. And now those are hydrogens. Uh, this carbon already has four bonds. How many bonds does iodine need to have? Well, iodine is only one hop away from a noble gas on the periodic table, so one bond. So then this one still needs three, right? And that CH3 is how we typically draw our one carbon methyl branches. And then I still need one here. And then I still need one here and one here and one there. So now that's 2,2-diodo-3-methyl-butane, right? Pick apart the name, take your time, work through the steps. All right, then there's our answer, which is pretty much the same thing that I just drew if I just erase my messiness over here, right? Except for um, the, I put the, in the, in this typed version, let's switch colors just for fun. Uh, then here's my CH3, right? So it's basically still the same thing. All right, so now we're not gonna focus on benzenes. Benzenes, um, we're gonna just skip, okay? So we're skipping all this, right? This is the benzene structure right here. Okay, so this is what we call an aromatic, right? So these are like our smelly, smelly things. Um, and some of them smell good and some of them smell bad, right? So a lot of chemistry stuff stinks. Um, okay, so then we have one, two, one, three, one, four, right? So one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. You do not have to be able to do this, okay? So if you want to even just cross it out, we'll just go right ahead. Okay, so this is one, four. Sometimes we call that para, right? Because it's on opposite sides. Again, you do not need to know that. Okay? All right. So now let's look at this thing. So now I need to name this one. So remember from another video, right? At the intersection, all these little points are carbon. So I'm just going to do little C's in here. Okay? So I need to give this a name. So I need to count how many carbons there are in the longest connected chain of carbons. So I have, let's switch to a yellow so I don't make it too much of a mess. So one, oops, one, two, three, four, five, six. It appears that I have six carbons. So then now I am going to circle my six carbons. And anything outside of the circle, right? That's either a carbon or now something from group number 17 is now considered a branch off of that. So I have hex means six carbons and they're all connected by single bonds. So I've got hexane. So, but this isn't just hexane. I got this on it and I have this on it. So I need to give the name of this. And what do I name first, chlorine or bromine? Well, it's always best to go in alphabetical order. So, and since this is closest to this end, I'm gonna count that as carbon number one and this is carbon number two. And then this one's carbon number three and this is four and that is five and that is carbon number six. So I am going to label, I have two on carbon number two, I have a bromine, so that's two bromo. And then now on carbon number five, I have a chlorine, so chloro, and then hexane. Sorry, I should have given myself a little bit more space. Okay, so here's my condensed formula. I'm not gonna be asking you to do that so much, but. The naming and the structure part is the important piece. All right, so that's 2-bromo-5-chlorohexane. So now let's take a look at this one. So this is now where I'm going to have a carbon branch 
as well as the chlorine branches. Am I even going to probably ask you this? Probably not. I probably would only even ask you, and you're probably only going to see like one halogen stuck on a simple chain and just would have to pretty much name that. So here's our condensed structural formula. So count the longest carbon chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six in a row is my longest carbon chain. Oops. And then I'm going to circle my six carbon chain. Okay, anything sticking out is a branch. So where are the branches? Right, so I've got a branch. I've got two chlorines here, right? They're both, and so I'm going to call this. So if I, which way is it going to be closer to get the smallest number? From left to right or right to left? Well, it looks like I'm going to go right to left because look, at this is all the way here on the other end. This is on carbon number one. So I have two of them, so they're both on carbon number one. So I'm going to have a 1,1 one, one, dichloro. And then I'm going to have on carbon number three, a one carbon branch. So that's a methyl. So then that's 1,1 one, one, dichloro, three methyl hexane. Again, if you can do this one, you can do any of them. Probably would not ask you one like that. So organic molecules, we can classify them if you look at table R, table R has class of organic compounds as part of its title. I probably need to use that. So then we classify them according to their functional groups. So what is the correct, don't worry about that. What is the correct name for this compound? Cool goodness. I don't like that condensed structural formula. Sometimes I think it's easier to see it visually if I stretch it out. So if I have, I have a CH2 and now a BR. So that means I have a bromine. Bromine can't go in the center because it can only make one bond. So it can't go on the inside. It has to go on the outside. How do I know it can make one bond? One hop away from a noble gas. Seven valence electrons. One valence electron away from being eight. Okay, so now here's those H's. Here's my CH2. So I've got my CH2 and I've got the BR. Now I have another CH2. And now I have another CH2. Oops, wait, CH2, BR, that takes care of that, CH2. Alrighty, so now I have a CH2. Did I do too many? Let's double check. I have two CH2s. Okay, two CH2s and another BR. So then I have three carbons in a row. So then three carbons, the prefix is prop. Okay, so uh, methyl, bromo, ethyl, no, I don't even have anything that even says prop. So I've got prop in here and I've got prop in here. And then propyl, is the branch three carbons long? Nope. So now I have two bromines, so I have dibromo and propane. So here's the propane. I've got two bromines, but where exactly are those bromines? So those two bromines are on carbons number one and carbon number three. So that's why it's going to be one, three, dibromo. Okay. All right, so now that wraps up our halo carbon set of notes according to using our table R. And so our next set of notes, we're going to talk about some compounds that contain oxygens.